Hi, this is Millie Kay. It's Saturday, April 29th, 2017. The subject of this video is the river valve outlet system at the Oroville Dam. And in order to understand the river valve outlet system, we need to go all the way back to the construction of the dam. This is a photo of the groundbreaking ceremony and the first blast. The first blast was to open up a hole so they could begin construction of the diversion tunnels. There are two diversion tunnels and their purpose was to divert water around the construction site during the building of the dam. And they've always been referred to as diversion tunnel number one and diversion tunnel number two. Here's a photo of diversion tunnel number one also still during the construction of the dam. And each of the diversion tunnels is 35 feet in diameter, 4,400 feet long, and they're lined in concrete. I'm going to switch to a, a, a drawing that will, I, I don't want to focus on all these technical details. I just want you to see how things are in relation to, here's the power plant, these are the turbines. This is diversion tunnel number two and diversion tunnel number one. And these tunnel plugs, they plugged up this end of those tunnels once the dam was completed. And when they plugged it up, the, uh, then the reservoir could start to fill. And so these tunnels lie underneath the dam. The dam was built on top of them. The plugs are concrete and they're 150 feet long, the tunnel plugs. Some people think they just plugged up the whole tunnel number one, but they didn't. As you can see, there's lots of tunnels and pipes down in there, but we're really gonna be focused right in here for the river valve outlet system. And I want you to see that in this diversion tunnel, you can see this right here is a it's a dissipator ring. It's a baffle ring. And I'll show you how that fits into all of this. This is a broader view. Hyatt Powerhouse or Power Plant. This is the access tunnel to get down from the power plant to diversion tunnel number two to the river valve chamber. This is tunnel number one. So here we have the river valve chamber and show you a cutaway view of that. So within diversion tunnel number two there are there are two huge pipes. They're six feet in diameter and the flow through them is controlled with uh, valves. This spherical valve for instance is six feet in diameter and 140 feet long. This is that baffle ring that I showed you in the other drawing also known as a dissipator ring and I'll show you the original dissipator ring this is the baffle ring, dissipator ring. Um, the purpose of a dissipator ring is to um, uh, tame the flow of the water so it's not so uh, destructive or turbulent. So that's the old one. It was broken uh, from the time they built the dam, so it's never been operational since then. In 2009, they hired a company to remove that baffle ring. So they had to chip out all that concrete and remove steel. It's a very interesting story and uh, of how that work was done. And I will leave a link in the description box of this video that goes to the website of the contractor. And at their website, they have a brief uh, slideshow and they, they tell about what it took to remove that baffle ring. It's very interesting. So that was in 2009, they removed that baffle ring. 
And then let's go back to the river valve chamber. So they had removed this baffle ring and it's still 2009. It was only months later after removing it that DWR uh, directed five employees to go down and open up the valves. Uh, I guess it was like a maintenance test and to see how it would go. And they did not want to go and it was actually against the expert advice that had been given to the Department of Water Resources. But the employees went and there were five employees. When they started opening the valves, it created a huge uh, vacuum effect and the water was um, just flowing through there. There were, it, it was uh, like hurricane force winds and it knocked the employees down and they were hanging on to everything they could to save their lives. And uh, debris or uh, really like tools and equipment was just being sucked down that tube. And there were, no one died, but there were injuries. And when they, when they were able to get control back of the system they got him out and, and took him to the hospital. So one had a broken arm and a broken leg, I believe. So it was, uh, it was a serious incident, and that was in uh, 2009. So that started a time of really intense, um, you know, assessments and reviews and reenactments and litigation. And it took three years for all of that to uh, end up in a settlement agreement. And so the agreement between Cal OSHA, Department of Water Resources, and the Operating Engineers Union, uh, one of the points of agreement was that no DWR or other personnel were permitted in the river valve chamber during future operations of the river valve outlet system. And also, they said that DWR cannot operate the existing river valve outlet system until it's refurbished or replaced, including the baffle ring. So they were going to have to put that baffle ring back before they could operate it. And this bottom one here. They also were going to require them to have uh, expert oversight of their upgrades and improvements. And the the bottom one here on the, on this view of uh, of the agreement required them. What they were going to have to do is be able to operate those controls remotely. So that involved getting new systems in, new technology and relocating the control area to the Hyatt power plant on the turbine deck is where they ended up putting that uh, so that they could monitor with cameras and control remotely the operation of those valves. So that started um, a period of uh, upgrades, refurbishments, replacements. I don't know exactly where this picture was taken, but it's it's an interesting view to show you what it would have been like down in those tunnels during that time. And here's some of the work that had to be done. Here's removing and inspecting the fixed cone valves. Here's the fixed cone valve. They're huge. This is uh, had to disassemble, assess, and refurbish. This is a uh, interesting picture of the the damaged parts. And then assembly, hydro testing. There was just a lot of uh, testing all of the hydraulics. And uh, so you have the settlement agreement in 2012. And then by 2014, they're continuing with the repairs. 
then the drought uh, intensified uh, in 2014. They, uh, I'm sure, began to realize that the water could, the um, river valve outlet system could ultimately be the only way to get water out of the reservoir because it can pull from from the lowest level. And if the uh, lake continued to dry up, uh, the capacity of that river valve outlet system could could be very important. And the full design capacity of the river valve outlet system is 5,400 cubic feet per second. So that's how much water it can pull out of the reservoir. And so in 2014 and 2015, they did do some uh, more or less testing of the system and they ran water through there. The, remember though, they didn't have the dissipator ring and they couldn't put it up to full capacity. So they're, uh, and they're working on the systems. So by, I read that they had put about half a million acre feet of water through there in 2014, 2015. And also they did some, whether it was testing or what, they were able to do some of the uh, requirements that they have to provide uh, controlled temperature water uh, for the Feather River to satisfy the mandates that they're under about the uh, the protected species, the fish in the Feather River. And that's because the water at the bottom of the lake is colder than at the upper levels of the reservoir. So uh, the river valve outlet system can provide that cold water that um, enhances the fish's environment. And in 2016, they replaced the baffle ring. And this is a photo. It's 2,000 feet inside of the tunnel number two. This is a Google view to show you where the outlets are on the downstream side of the dam. Here's the Oroville Dam. Hyatt power plant and those outlets come out right here. I'll show it to you a little closer. Well, let me just go here. So, those are the diversion tunnel outlets that go into the Thermalito diversion pool, which is the tail race for the Hyatt power plant. like to mention that the photos that I've used are from Department of Water Resources publications. And I want to thank you for viewing. I hope you will like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you later.